Well, good afternoon, and welcome to this uh, another edition of these Hope in These COVID Day videos that we're doing. Hopefully, they're encouraging. It is a gorgeous day here on uh, July 23rd, 2020, and um, I just can't believe what a beautiful day it is outside. I, I don't deserve this. Um, but I did want to uh, just say, I, I know that things are weird. I cannot believe that it's been this many months. It's been, what, five months now, and we are still um, not back to normal. And this might be the new normal. We don't know. Um, we're still not gathering on Sunday mornings together. We're hoping to do that out on the patio, maybe on Saturday nights, maybe on uh, Sunday nights or Sunday mornings. But we're hoping to gather again, and we're making plans to do that. Some of the equipment we've ordered has come in, so that's very exciting. So we're making progress to make that happen again. But even so... I just want to give you some words of encouragement, some things that I've been going through just in the last week or so. As many of you know, Don and I have been uh, in the throes of preparing our backyard for a wedding. Um, it's been a bit crazy at our house. My oldest son, Joel, got married on Friday, July 17th, 2020, to a beautiful young lady named Breezy. And the two of them had a great day, and it was a beautiful wedding. Um, the weeks and the months leading up to the wedding were very busy and they're crazy just like any other wedding plans i don't know if there's ever been a wedding that didn't have a lot of you know stress and pressure behind it but with the added stress of covid and all of the recent closures and shutdowns and the uncertainty and the fluidity of what's happening it's added quite a bit more stress um, the, the wedding was moved to our backyard and uh, putting all that together, making that beautiful and putting all that together was very difficult. And it seemed it got more difficult each day we got closer and closer to the wedding. So what did Don and I do? We prayed. After we panicked, of course, you know, we, 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 we panicked and ran around and they said, wait, we need to stop and pray. We prayed that God would do a miracle and make this a beautiful day for the two of them. We prayed separately and we prayed together every day. Um, it was easy to pray every day during this time from March and when all these things changed till the day of the wedding. It was easy to pray every day because every day something changed. Something came, became out of our control. We didn't know what to do. Too many differing opinions on how to do it, you know. So there's, everything was new. For example, they wanted to live stream the wedding. The wedding was originally intended to be about 150 people, somewhere around there, at a ranch up Sierra Highway. But because of all the closures, the wedding got moved to our backyard with just 30 people. Um, and that presented a whole bunch of challenges. First of all, my backyard was not ready for a wedding. So there was a lot of things that needed to be done. Um, and a lot of you know, plants needed to grow and bloom and be beautiful. And um, so we prayed, we prayed, we prayed, we prayed. But one of the things, as I said, was the live stream. We wanted to make the live stream happen so that those 120 people that could not be in attendance were able to feel like they were there and share in the day with Joel and Breezy. So we had to put that together. So we tried out Facebook and Joel put up account and he filled out all the stuff to do an account and we tested it and it worked fantastically. We couldn't believe how easy it worked. The kids did some stupid little video in the backyard. It looked great. We were able to zoom in and zoom out and everything. People were able to watch it on their phones all over the house and over at Breezy's house. And it was great. And then on Monday, that was two weeks before the wedding or three weeks before the wedding. And then on Monday before the wedding, um, yeah, the Monday before last, Facebook locked them out. Joel's account became um, locked out. And there's not much time now to fix it, so what do we do? So we decided to try YouTube. So we attempt YouTube, and there's a lot of learning curve there, so we start learning how to do that, watching YouTube videos on how to use YouTube, live stream and everything. Joel filled out for an account, it took two days to get that registered, and then on Wednesday, we were finally able to test it. That went pretty well, that went great. We did it again on Thursday for the dress rehearsal, or whatever it's called, yeah, the wedding rehearsal. And, that, and YouTube worked out great. And we prayed. We prayed a lot. We, this is something Joel was responsible for. That was his task that he was supposed to get done. So he was nervous. We were nervous. How are we going to make this work? And we prayed a lot. Um, the day of the wedding, it's here. And YouTube, the camera, the mic, they all worked great. And the guests were able to watch the wedding in real time along with us on YouTube 
What a blessing. Unbelievable. Breezy looked gorgeous. Billy did a fantastic job with the sermon, like he always does. The flowers and the decorations were beautiful, and the Cuban food was outstanding. All the planning, the prep, and the prayers resulted in a fantastic wedding and the union of two of my very favorite people. The wedding, once again, was on Friday the 17th. But it wasn't until Monday, July 20th, three days later, that I thought to even stop and thank God for all the answered prayers. I felt so guilty. I would never do that to a close friend. If a close friend came alongside me and listened to me, heard my fears, my concerns, my worries, and helped me and solved my problems, and, and he figured out how to make Facebook work, I would have said thank you. I would have said thank you immediately. I would have said thank you multiple times. But I didn't do that with God. I sent my prayers up from March. I sent my prayers up in May and April and May and June and July, kept praying for these things to happen, and I don't feel like I ever said thank you. It made me think of the passage in Luke, Luke 17, 11 through 19. Sorry for that big pause right there. Something very loud drove by. Um, Luke 17, 11 through 19. Let me read it for you. Um, As they continued toward Jerusalem, Jesus and his disciples, they reached the border between Galilee and Samaria. As they entered the village there, 10 lepers stood up and at a distance crying out, Jesus, Master, sir, have mercy on us. He looked at them and said, Go to the Jewish priests and show them that you are healed. As they were going, their leprosy disappeared. One of them came back to Jesus shouting, Glory to God, I'm healed. He fell flat to the ground in front of Jesus, face downward in the dust, thanking him for what he had done. This man was a despised Samaritan. Jesus asked, Didn't I heal ten men? Where are the nine? Does only this foreigner return and give glory to God? And Jesus said to this man, Stand up and go. Your faith has been made well. I was like that man. I asked for a blessing and he blessed us. Then I talked, then I walked away and I didn't say thank you. Well, not immediately at least. Donna and I did at least stop and take time to thank God. But it was a good reminder to always be thankful. When you ask God for help and he gives it to you, say thank you. Even if he doesn't answer you right away or the way you wanted him to, say thank you and thank him often. When life seems that God isn't even there, that God isn't listening, when it seems that God, the, the prayers aren't going any higher than the ceiling, continue to thank God. Because in the story of Daniel and the lion's den, preceding the actual lion's den, what led up to that? Well, what we see in this story is some jealous men setting a trap for Daniel. See, Daniel was very elevated. He's a foreigner and he's been elevated to a very high rank with the king. And so they want to bring him down. So they go to the king and they come up with a plan. The plan is that for a certain amount of time, they are only allowed to worship and praise the king. No other gods, no hymns, no songs, no prayers to anybody but the king. And the king said, sounds good to me. I like that. So he signed a decree. But what did Daniel do? As soon as he heard it was signed, even before the ink dried, what did Daniel do when he heard about this decree? Daniel 6.10 tells us, Daniel 6.10 once again. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. And in his upper room, with his windows open towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom ever since the early days. So when times got bad, Daniel went into prayer and he gave thanks to God. The whole thing was they were trying to trap him because he was praying and he's been elevated and they were jealous of him. And they knew that he was going to continue to pray because this is what Daniel did. They knew he was going to pretend, uh, continue to thank his God and not the king. So they set him up. So Daniel did exactly what they thought he was going to do because Daniel was a man of character and a man of great faith. And so he went and he prayed and he thanked God even during this crazy decree that the king had made. When the government made a crazy 
decision, what did he do? He prayed and gave thanks to God. Now, I know we really can't relate to the story because our government never does that. Our government is always following and honoring God. But just in case, just if our government ever did pass a law that went against or was contrary to the word of God, what should we do? Just as Daniel did. We should get on our knees and we should pray and we should ask God for his protection and we should thank God because God is deserving of our praise and our thanks. Because whether we feel like it or not, because whether we see it or not, we are blessed and have many reasons to thank God. You are children of the living God. Your sins have been forgiven. Your eternal destiny is guaranteed in heaven. And you have the gift and the power of the Holy Spirit in you if you have put your faith and you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And just that alone, no matter how crazy the government gets, no matter how crazy COVID gets, no matter how insane the, um, the racial tensions get, we serve a God that is worthy and honor of thanks and praise at all times. If everything else seems out of whack, then these truths are enough for us to be thankful to God because someday, and hopefully soon, we will be face to face and in the presence of God. So I want to leave you with these words from God through Paul to the church, to the, to the Colossians, and to us, to the people, the Colossians, and to us. Colossians 3, 16 through 17. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs of the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Giving thanks to God the Father whether in word or deed, through Jesus Christ. We are blessed because we are children of the living God. And it should not have taken me so long to thank God for the many blessings that he bestowed upon us for the day of Joel's wedding. From March, April, May, June, all along, I should have been thanking God much more diligently than I was for all the blessings. And just thanking him even if something didn't work out. And many things didn't work out but everything worked out perfectly for the day of that wedding. I just want to encourage you to be thankful because when we are thankful, we're focusing on the blessings of God and not all the negative. It's like spending too much time in Facebook and getting all nervous and anxiety ridden when we should be spending time in God's presence. So I want to encourage you, just as Daniel did, just as Paul has done, just as Jesus did, when things get rough, pull aside, find some quiet place, pray and give thanks to God. We love you. God bless you. Stay encouraged. And we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.